Hi friends, I'm Father Kerry Walters, pastor of Holy Spirit American National Catholic Church, and this is another Holy Spirit moment. I'd like to share with you a tale that comes to us from the Middle East. It takes place in the city of Damascus. One morning, a servant is sent by his master into the marketplace to buy food for the day's meals. And shortly afterwards, he comes rushing back to the master's home. He's breathless. He's terrified. The master asks him what in the world is wrong, and the servant says this, When I was in the marketplace just now, I spied death. And when death saw me, he glowered threateningly at me. And so, O oh master, I've returned here to beg you to lend me your swiftest steed so that I might flee death by riding to the distant town of Samara. Well, the master, of course, lends the steed to his servant, and the servant takes off. But afterwards, the master becomes angry. How dare death threaten one of his servants? And so the master goes to the marketplace himself to find and confront death, and he does so. But after listening to him, death says, Sir, there must be a mistake here. You see, I didn't glower threateningly at your servant. The expression on my face was one of surprise. I was surprised to see him here in the marketplace in Damascus because, you see, I have an appointment with him later on today in Samara. That's such a chilling tale, isn't it? And I think that one of the reasons it so chills us is because each and every one of us recognizes that we too have an appointment in Samara. We can try to flee it like the servant in the story, but in point of fact, we know that this is one appointment we can't break. We must make this appointment. Even those of us who are persons of faith, who know that because we are made in the likeness of an eternal God, we cannot die, can find the notion of death unsettling. Surely, none of us have escaped that dark night in soul when we suddenly awaken and we look up into the darkness from our beds and we realize with despair and terror that this flesh which seems so alive and permanent will one day be cold and lifeless. So how do we cope with this death fear which all of us carry around with us? There have been lots of strategies that have been formulated throughout the ages, haven't there? One strategy, for instance, is to philosophize about death, to try and approach the topic rationally. The philosopher Epictetus famously said, for example, where death is, I am not, and where I am, death is not. So what's to worry? Well, this syllogism, although it's logically airtight, offers cold comfort to most of us who fear our own death. What we desire, what we need, is some kind of a response that will speak to our heart and not just our head. Others of us try to cope with death fear by legacy building. We parent children in the hope that our names and our genes will live on long after we have died. Or we struggle for fame and fortune so that we can endow buildings with our names and scholarships with our names and earn a place in the history books. But we know, don't we, that fame is always fleeting and that even those peoples whose names are most known in this generation and perhaps even in the next generation will eventually become completely anonymous to future generations. Others of us try to cope with our death fear by throwing ourselves into living in the present, living in the moment, a kind of carpe diem existence. But that sort of existence almost always devolves into thrill-seeking, and thrill-seeking in turn becomes stale after a while. And in addition, in all truthfulness, we can't live in the present. We are creatures who inevitably project ourselves from the present into the future, either in hope or anxiety. Some of us, on the other hand, try to cope with our death fear by surrounding ourselves with continuous reminders of our mortality. The poet John Donne, for example, is said to have slept each night in his shroud to remind himself of the time in which he would sleep in it permanently in the grave. But this lifestyle, this way of trying to cope with death, can lead to a kind of morbidity, which saps all joy out of life. In fact, these last two strategies, thrill-seeking on the one hand, memento mori, constant recognition of mortality on the other, 
can lead to spiritual death long before physical death occurs. So how can we cope with our death fear, whether we're persons of faith or not? Well, from ministering to people who have died, I think I've learned one lesson that I want to pass on to you. It's a very simple lesson to state. It may not be as easy a lesson to actually enact in our lives, but here it is. We generally will die as we have lived. We generally will die as we have lived. So, for example, if we have lived lives in which we've cultivated virtues, such as patience and courage and compassion, those virtues will not only enrich our lives while we live, but can also make our deaths easier when our time to depart this world comes. We will be able to face our death with a certain amount of courage, face our death with a certain amount of patience, and face our death with a certain amount of compassion for others instead of allowing what's happening to us to focus us squarely and exclusively on ourselves. A good death is a great gift to give to loved ones. On the other hand, if we fail to cultivate uh, virtues in our life, if we fail to live courageously or compassionately or patiently, we really increase our risk of dying a very brittle, a very brutal, a very awful death. If we cultivate virtues such as the ones that I've described, we can let what happens to our souls after we die stay in the hands of God. We can trust that whatever occurs when the body ceases to exist, We've lived a life that has prepared ourselves as best we can for that final moment. And here's a last thought for you. All of the great religious traditions of the world, including Christianity, teach that if we would truly live, we have to die. And certainly what is meant by that is that we have to cease becoming egoistic and self-centered long enough to recognize that there is something greater than our own puny little existences. If we cultivate virtues throughout our life, we become less selfish, we become less self-centered, and as a consequence, when our time comes to die, we don't cling as fiercely as we otherwise might to who we were. Instead, we allow what's happening to happen and look forward to what we might become. I'm Father Kerry Walters, and this has been another Holy Spirit moment. Thank you. I'll see you next time, my friends.